Hello, it's Reya and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be talking all about the books and comics that I read in the month of June. I did not read a whole lot because June was hectic. There was a lot going on in like real life stuff and I'm only just now uh, getting to deal with the emotional impact of some of the things that went down uh, in my personal life. So that definitely had an impact on my reading and I ended up reading uh, a lot more comics uh, this month than books because of it. So without further ado, let's get started. First and foremost, I want to quickly mention that I read a bunch of volumes of both XXXHolic by Clamp and My Little Monster by Robbie. Got these were rereads, and I still enjoyed both series a lot. And I shall leave my Silverin Manga Rex video down in the description so you can check that out for more thoughts on those series, so I won't dwell on them too much, but highly enjoyable and really um, it was comforting to read something familiar that I knew that I already liked, so yeah. Next I read the graphic novel Abbott by Saladin Ahmed and illustrated by Sami Kivela. Uh, this is nominated for the best graphic uh, work category in the Hugos, and to be quite honest, I was mostly interested in reading this because it has a Finnish illustrator. Um, you know, usually uh, you don't see a lot of Finns working on like a huge global scale, like working on imprints and publishing um, material that's outside Finland. So I was really excited to uh, read Abbott and <laughs> I have to say that I wasn't like the biggest fan. It was okay. Um, it basically takes place in the 70s uh, USA, um, just like in the polit political turmoil of the 70s. It's about racism and it's about um, black people dealing with racism and dealing with police violence and such. And the main character is a journalist who has this supernatural um, uh, supernatural gift. Uh, she is basically a vessel of light. And then some really dark, shadowy things start happening around her. And she gets embroiled in this supernatural murder case. And yeah, it was, it was okay story-wise. My main problem with the... Um, with the graphic novel was the art. It was very kind of meh. Um, I was actually much more interested in the cover art and the issue covers that were done by a different artist to Sami Kivela. Uh, and, I, and I felt that it, I was kind of falsely advertised because the cover for Abbott is done by the it's done by a different artist. It's not done by the person who actually draws the actual pages. And that bugged me so much because I thought that the art done by the other person was more interesting and more engaging and more vivid and more unique. And the actual art in the comics was kind of generic and, dare I say, kind of stereotypical in the way people were drawn. Like... <laughs> I don't know, it just wasn't my thing, and I was a little bit let down by it. Uh, but still, there were some really excellent uh, panels that I liked. The use of color in some cases was really good. And the story was okay, but not like the best. So I ended up giving uh, Abbott three and a half stars. Moving on to something better, I read uh, Laura Dean Keeps Breaking Up With Me by Mariko Tamaki and illustrated by Rosemary Valero O'Connell. And this was great. The art is spectacular, it's very soft, it's, it's very inclusive, you see a lot of 
different types of characters with different body types. There is a lot of racial diversity, uh, diversity including body types, including um, uh, sexual orientation and gender expression. Like this is a very inclusive uh, graphic novel. But what made me love it so much is that it deals with a topic that's not usually broached by um, queer comics or queer books, uh, at least not that I'm aware of, and I think that it's sorely needed. And that is the exploration of being in a toxic relationship, a toxic romantic relationship, how that affects your friendships, how that affects your other um, personal relations and how you deal with it and how you get away from it. And I just loved it. This is about Freddy, uh, who identifies as a lesbian, and she is dating Laura Dean, who kind of serially breaks up with her, and then just as Freddy is getting over her, Laura Dean comes back to her life and twists her around her little finger again. And I've personally been on the receiving end of that sort of relationship, and to be completely honest, I've also been the shitty person who does that to another person when I was a teenager. So having that um, representation and ha having that uh, relationship uh, showcased in this way was really eye-opening and uh, kind of... I wish I wish I had this book. Uh, I wish I had this graphic novel when I was growing up and when I was seventeen. Uh, so maybe I wouldn't have made those kinds of mistakes. But yeah, I really love this, and I want to read it again, and I want to own it. I read it from the library, and I am definitely picking up my own copy. Uh, there were some issues that I had with it. I wish that we could have explored Laura Dean's character a bit more. And there was also a gay side couple um, who kind of had, had their story left hanging. Uh, I wish that character arc would have been uh, brought to the finish line. But other than that, really enjoyable. Highly loved it and would highly recommend it too. Uh, four stars. Moving on to the actual books that I read, I first read Monster Barrow Cormorant by Seth Dickinson. And oh boy, I gave uh, the first one, The Traitor Barrow Cormorant, five stars. I really loved it. I thought that it dealt with this kind of ambitious, um, savant type character who is raised in really toxic, uh, in a really toxic environment and sort of brought up to um, internalize the prejudices against her own culture in favor of the empire that colonized her uh, home island. And the limited point of view of Baru was done excellently. There was this theme that Baru was constantly forgetting that people were not pawns on her board, but actual players on their own right. And I really loved that. And that whole thing was lost in the second book. Like, completely. There is no limited point of view. Like, okay, you have Baru's point of view, sure. But you also have point of views from, like, I want to say four or five other characters, and that means that you are constantly getting to know things that Baru wouldn't have access to, and um, there is that limited point of view and that uh, limited knowledge is lost because now you get to see the story from other points of view. And Seth Dickinson also tries to play with um, character voice. He has Baru uh, talk in like third person past tense, then he has characters in 
third person present tense, he has characters in first person present tense, first person past tense, and to me that fluctuation in narrative style felt like an absolute gimmick because in the end all of the voices ended up sounding exactly the same because you can't just change the narrative structure, you need to change how the characters think and if they all use the same type of language, they all use the same type of idioms and phrases, then it, then it becomes clear that you are generally writing from, a se from the same kind of perspective and you are not able to break out of your uh, kind of own voice, you know? So I, I, I felt that instead of having character voices, we had the author voice telling us uh, these plot things uh, through these characters and I felt I, I, I was so let down by that. Um, the, the narrative voices and the characters ended up becoming so samey and it made this book so hard to read and it made me so disinterested in it because I loved the first one so much and this second one was just like there were interesting things. I think there was uh, interesting explorations of gender and how this kind of long uh, war and how having relations with a empire that is colonizing the world basically and having this huge power struggle between two juggernauts like you have the Falkrest Empire and you have the Oriati Embo, which are these big, huge powers, and they are in this kind of gridlock vying for control, essentially. And there's this interesting dynamic there of having characters who are both in the Falkresti Empire and characters who are in the Oriati Embo having, having point of views, but at the same time, it, it was just, I was like, sorry, I'm not interested anymore because you've basically taken the thing that kept me interested and hooked in the first book and you've just completely tossed it aside. So I don't know, I I ended up giving the monster Baro Cormorant uh, three stars, which is a huge like knocked down from the five stars of the first book and I I don't even know if I want to continue on I'm, I'm just kind of like eh like I don't know I'm 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 disappointed by it tell me in the comments should I read the third one when it comes out and finally the last thing that I finished in the month of June was The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas I listened to it on audio and I really liked it. I feel like it deals with a really important and timely topic and the audiobook narrator Bonnie Turpin did an amazing job. Um, she was excellent, she gave every character their own voices and her male voices and her old character voices, they all sounded really distinct. So I will definitely say that the audiobook enhanced my experience with the story. Um, I feel like because I am not a US citizen and I've never lived there or anything, I don't have the cultural knowledge for some of the things, like the whole dynamic between the different like... Um, like suburbs and the ghetto and stuff and also how you have these sort of kind of like segregated areas and segregated schools essentially because you have black neighborhoods and white neighborhoods that's kind of like I haven't lived that and it was sometimes a little bit confusing to me like I think it the book gives you great context but at the same time, because I am not 
an American, I had a little bit of a hard time following the cultural cues. Also, different like product placements and you know the whole basketball MBA thing. Like I don't know that stuff. So some of so some of the stuff definitely uh, went over my head a bit, but I still thought that this was a very well told story. And I liked the character of Star. I liked that she had a lot of time to process her grief and sort of the PTSD that came with witnessing her friend getting shot. I liked that there was uh, exploration of an interracial um, uh, romantic relationship and how there's bias on both sides. Um, you know, Star's father doesn't approve of her uh, dating a white boy, and also uh, Star's boyfriend has certain biases because he's white. Uh, he has certain biases, uh, subconscious or not, uh, against black people. So I, I like the exploration of that. Um, I will say that the ending was a little bit too neat, like everyone gets exactly what they want in the end, which, you know, it's it's not uh, necessarily a bad thing, but I'm the kind of reader who likes a little bit of crunch, a little bit of, like, grittiness, and to not have everything be so perfect. I gave The Hate You Give four stars, and I really liked it. And there you have it. Those are all the things that I read in the month of June. If you have read any of these books, tell me in the comments what did you think about them. And I will see you in the next one very soon. Bye bye!